Welcome back. It's time for our second hot topic. I want to take a look at FG and states open talks on minimum wage review. And I've been joined by Frank Elianya, who is a technology and media news editor at Business Day. Hello, Frank. Yeah, good morning. And nice to join you again on the show. Nice to have you. So federal government and states have open talks on minimum wage review as organized labor insists on pay raise to cushion the effects of petrol subsidy removal. Now, Frank, what do we know about these talks and how it's evolving? All right. So the thought uh, that's ongoing is uh, um, against uh, the the current realities uh, of uh, inflation rising in the country, um, currently at 22.9%. Uh, um, and of course, be, um, the impact it has had on the um, tech home of uh, workers um, across all sectors. Um, so if you look at, uh, um, for instance, as at uh, 2009, the highest paid uh, lecturers in Nigeria were earning, if we calculate what they were earning in uh, dollar terms, it was at uh, 2,300 a month. Um, as at uh, this month, uh, month of July, sorry, as at uh, July 2022, that um, salary has been uh, decimated to $178. Um, dollars. Um, <laughs> if you wow. look at that, in Terms. Yes, if, we, if you look at that in percentage terms, that's over 80% of uh, their take home uh, um, decimated. Um, yeah, the money will still look like, oh, you are giving 100,000 there a month. Uh, but then if you look at it uh, against inflation, you'll find that uh, what is 100,000 there in 2009 um, is probably 20,000 there today. You know, so against that background, um, the NLC um, is insisting that they deserve, um, and I think rightly so, um, for their wages to be increased, at least the minimum wage. And of course, you, you know that if the minimum wage is increased across all levels of uh, um, engagement also, they will also see a review, okay? So what that means is that the government um, talking about the federal government, the state government, and I think the talks should also include the local government because local government also have a civil servants mm -hmm. and also have workers um, that they employ. So um, our government across all the three tiers, uh, all the uh, three tiers, um, have to meet to talk about how what needs to do. Also, given that it is this the same government that is driving some of the reforms that has led. The inflation on the part that it is currently so um, you you will expect that they should um, consider reviewing the minimum wage so that people can at least um, uh, um, take something home after uh, after um, working for a whole um, 30 days in a month you know so it, it is what is currently ongoing and what has brought us to this point Yes. Um, another thing is that since April 2019, when former President Buhari signed the new minimum wage bill of 30,000 naira a month, some states in the country are yet to implement that, making one wonder how they would, such states, would implement any further increase, needed increase, necessary increase for the workers. Yeah, you're absolutely right that uh, some states, um, in fact, many states have to, uh, are struggling to pay um, the previous raise on the minimum wage. And I dare say that it's not because they don't have it. I, I believe strongly that it's a result of mismanagement. Um, um, it's a result of them not being accountable to the resources that they have. And it's also a result of laziness to take advantage of the resources that they that they have and grow it. Um, what do I mean by that? Um, so we see that um, uh, many of them every month, uh, not many of them, all of them every month, um, look forward to the FAC allocation from the federal government. So um, over time, we have had very, very um, lazy set of uh, governors 
um, that um, all they think about is how do we get that money and use it maybe to pay off uh, um, um, debt and, and use it maybe to also um, splunge, you know, uh, because most of that money also are diverted and they are not accounted for. And we've, we've strongly said that that money should always be accounted for, but it hasn't been done to date. So um, what you have is once that money is finished, um, the little resources that the, that the state um, generates as revenue are, are either mismanaged or, or, or used in ways that don't um, enable them to add or to become investment. You know, so many capital projects are hanging in many states, you know, and many states are going about collecting loans. And uh, uh, many of these loans are not being judiciously, judiciously utilized, whereas their workers' welfare are ignored. You know, um, if, if we were to maybe calculate how many of them, uh, as in how many workers each state have, and then calculate it against what revenue that they generate and what the potential revenue they should generate, they can easily actually pay it. You know, if those monies are judicial, judiciously utilized. But what we've had over time is corruption in most of these states. And because of that corruption, because they don't want to give up some of the gains that they make from, uh, from diverting these revenues, that is why they are constantly uh, um, subjecting workers in their states to these uh, conditions where the federal government makes an allocation or makes... Um, have an agreement with them, you're going to pay 30,000 um, 30, naira, and then they come back home and say, oh, we don't have it, we don't, we're a very poor state, you know that. But from history, we know that every state has, di has, many ref has different resources that they can actually tap into and grow their revenue. Every state can actually attract investors. Every state can actually uh, um, become um, autonomous financially on their own. But it takes some level of um, financial discipline for you to get to that point. And sadly, many of them are not ready to take that walk yet. And that's why um, we are here. And that's why the, um, the workers in their states continue to suffer because of these um, indecisions they make. Well, one of the headlines this morning, and I'm giving credit to the Punch newspaper, uh, says FG withdraws contempt suit against Labour, NLC may suspend strike, and one of the writers there, T NLC, TUC, await FG on palliative agreement, and then call special meeting over planned strike. So there you have it. It's, it's, it's absolutely crazy for you to want to um, go to court with NLC when you're supposed to be um, um, engaging them um, and uh, trying to resolve the issues they have. Everything they have said is germane. Mm -hmm. I know they are asking for 200,000 um, naira. Why it might seem ridiculous, you know, uh, but some, somebody can look at it and say, ah, but we are, we are running a government where um, the National Assembly has allocated 70 billion naira to itself. We are running a government where the National Assembly has decided that it wants to drive cars, new cars, and they will cost us 40 billion naira. We are running a government where um, the, the executive have allocations for newspapers that they don't read anymore. They have allocations for different things, for going to toilet, for doing other things, you know. So um, if you have that humongous cost on, of uh, um, official personnel, and then the other, I think it was yesterday, um, the, the president was uh, trying to defend the overbloated uh, cabinet he's about to inherit and he said that, that it is a way to create employment. So he, uh, he recruited 48 people that he's going to pay millions. And in a month, their salaries alone um, gets to billions of Naira. So he says it's because he wants to create um, employment. So he's giving employment to few people and using about bill as many billions to pay few people, 48 people, who in turn will recruit maybe about three, four people as eight, you know? So we don't have our priorities right. 
that is where the problem is. So if you look at what NLC is asking and saying, okay, pay us 200,000 naira a month because you have increased our burden by 300, 400%. You know, so whatever you buy in the market right now is about 300 to 400% increase. You know, so if they were earning 230,000 era before, so you calculate that by maybe 300 to 400%, you probably will arrive at close to 200,000 era. That's what they're asking for. You know, so it's, it's, it is crazy then for the government in, um, to turn around and say, oh, we're going to take you to court because you are, you're, not, uh, uh, um, um, you're not appearing in court. You don't want to engage in all of that. You know, <clears throat> um, part of the problem we have here is a problem of trust. And absolutely, I agree with the NLC. There's no reason to trust that the government will, will do what um, it has promised to do. We have seen it play out in ASU. ASU strikes, and um, to, to date, I know they have not resolved everything that they agree with ASU, so we will probably expect another strike from ASU once NLC drops his own uh, uh, um, agitation. You know, perhaps after ASU, the, the medical association will also take up his own um, case against the government. These are the associations that have reached different agreements with the government, and at the end of the day, the government reneged on the agreement which led them back to struggling um, with the government. So the issue here is about trust. The NLC needs to know, needs a commitment from the government that what you have promised, you are going to deliver. That's just the only thing that they are asking for. Now, if they have said, if they are giving you 200,000 naira, as uh, as what they want to be paid, you can call them to the table and say, okay, let's let me give you hundred thousand naira. You know, yeah. Somebody say, oh, but we don't have it, that money in our till right now. But why do we have money for other frivolities and not money for the welfare of our workers? Mm -hmm. That's a question that I keep asking. If you have money to send the officials abroad, if you have money to employ 48 ministers, you have money to spend on your National Assembly in all that, why don't you have money for those who actually do the work that these um, officials inherit? You know, so, and when you pay NLC, or when you pay this, the workers that amount of money, you are you have to now become a lot more alert because the money is paying you, so you now have to demand more from them. Exactly. And I, I think that might even lead to um, civil service reforms that everybody has been agitating for. There's a lot of corruption in our civil service. And that's because they are looking at the fact that the government or those who employ them or those who, are, who, 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 who they are serving are being irresponsible. So they, too, feel like there's no deterrent. Yesterday, again, I was uh, listening um, to uh, a testimony by uh, Juan Colo, um, something talking about the Federal Character Commission, mm -hmm. and how he used to be the one to collect money of people who want to be recruited into federal, federal, um, federal, federal parasite status, all right. He collects money from them. He he will remit that money to the account of the chairman directly. He said that the woman likes uh, cash, mm -hmm. you know that. So there's a lot of irresponsibility in the system, and people are not even afraid to 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 um to hold back because they know that nobody's going to do anything to them, you know. So NLC has seen all of this, and NLC knows that. If they don't do something now about themselves, nobody's going to care about it. Mm -hmm. So we, it is time for us to clean the system. But then, again, I will say it will start from the government. Government needs to look in, inwards, clean up the dirty cobwebs that it has. It has a lot of it. It is reeking. It is not sitting. If we are fiscally prudent, then we can have better discussions with NLC. But at, at, at the moment, with the way we are running our economy, we can't have um, productive discussions except this kind of discussions where you have to give me this, I will give you that, and all of that back and forth. And all, and no. There has to be trust in the system. And that's what NLC is asking for with its huge wage demand.
Yeah, interesting you mentioned the huge cabinet that this new uh, government is building for itself. I missed calls for prudence. I missed call for uh, pruning down on government expenses. Um, and to add to what the president is uh, gathering for himself, Adamawa State Governor Ahmadu Fintiri of, um, you know, has also announced the appointment of 47, 47 media aides. We're not talking commissioners, we're talking 47 media aides. So <laughs> where do we go from here? And so a good reason why Labour would say there's no reason why you can't pay us. Absolutely. You know, so 47 media aides, don't forget that they're not going to be paid 100,000 there. Those ones are going to be paid maybe between 300,000, 400 plus the other things that they will steal. Plus for the vehicles, the brand new vehicles that they like to buy for themselves. So, uh, officially, these are like uh, um, the governors um, and special people. It, why is that? And Adamawa State was one of the states that were not paying the 13,000 naira. So when the governors come out and tell us, oh, we cannot pay it because we don't have enough resources to do it, another, why on earth would you recruit 47 people to just social media and content creation? What content are they creating? Are you should open a newsroom, become a media house, then do something else. So it is crazy. And I don't know. So, but that's... That's the situation we find ourselves, and it needs to change before we can make any progress at all. All right, so Frank, let's uh, probably leave it at that. As the situation continues to unfold, we'll begin. We we'll continue to analyze, and especially hope that the Nigerian workers will get a fair deal uh, this time around. Thank you, Frank. Thank you so much. Thank you. Frank Eliana there, Technology and Media News Editor at Business Day. Well, that's our package today on The Breakfast this morning. Before we leave, let's drop our quote of the day with you. Let's go invent tomorrow instead of worrying about what has happened yesterday. i take that again. Let's go invent tomorrow instead of worrying about what happened yesterday. That's according to Steve Jobs. I am Maureen Menon with you. Thanks for being a part of the breakfast today. Remember to join us tomorrow for another episode. Have a great day.